roasted red pepper and tomato soup. It is so easy to make and so delicious. It has tons of flavor, the most lovely texture, and the best part is that it's made entirely on one sheet pan. This is one of my favorite things to make towards the end of summer when the nights are starting to get a little bit cooler. The red peppers are finally ripe and I've still got a table full of tomatoes that need using up. Let me show you how I make it. So here's what you'll need. You will need about four pounds of paste tomatoes and we're gonna chop these up. It'll be about 12 cups of large diced paste tomatoes. I usually throw in one or two heirlooms just for a little extra flavor, but for the most part, paste tomatoes will give you the best texture of soup because they're really meaty. You'll need one small onion and I'm using yellow, but you could use red or white if that's what you have. And then two very large cloves of garlic because this is a lovely savory soup with lots of garlic flavor. And then possibly the star of the soup is a big, sweet red bell pepper. You'll also need some fresh thyme and then some basic pantry staples like olive oil, salt, and pepper. And I'll put the full list of ingredients with their measurements in the video description below. I'm gonna get started chopping everything. And the wonderful thing about this recipe is that it's super quick and easy because all of the vegetables are just cut into big chunks. It is not fussy. There's no peeling of the tomatoes. I don't even seed them. I just cut them up into these big, about two inch pieces or so. And I can really zip through a lot of tomatoes when I'm cutting them into just big, chunky pieces like this. It's so easy. If you're using smaller paste tomatoes, you can just cut them right in half. I have some really elongated ones here and these I'm just gonna cut into big, chunky pieces again, going for about two inches, but it really doesn't have to be perfect. And if you don't know what a paste tomato is, it's any variety that's meant for making sauce with. So these are usually meatier tomatoes with less seeds and less water inside. They make a nicer, thicker sauce, or in this case, a nicer, thicker soup with a better texture. Some classic examples are the Roma and the San Marzano. I'm using Pomodoro Squisito here. That was the long one. And then the one I cut before that, which was a little thicker, was an Amish paste, which is another one of my favorites. Once I have a bunch chopped up, I measure them out, and this is a four cup measuring cup. I need 12 cups of tomatoes, so I am going to keep chopping. The other thing I should point out is I am removing the little stem nubbin at the end. Paste tomatoes don't typically have a big white core in the center that needs removing, so I don't bother doing that. But of course, if your tomatoes do, go ahead and remove those. And if all you have is slicing tomatoes or big heirloom tomatoes, you can use those. The soup will be a little bit different texture and maybe um, a little bit thinner, which is fine, especially if your heirloom tomatoes are the really meaty ones that don't have a lot of liquid inside. They'll work really well for this recipe too. I don't think I'd use cherry tomatoes for this recipe. You could make a soup with cherry tomatoes, but it would be a different quantity of tomatoes than I'm calling for here, and it would be a little bit sweeter as well, since cherry tomatoes tend to have more sugar in them, so you'd need a little bit different balance of ingredients. All right, one more measuring cup full of tomatoes going on the pan. You can see how quick that was. I cut those up in, I think it was less than a minute. One thing I really love about this recipe is that it's made entirely on a sheet pan, so it is extremely hands-off and easy. Next up is the pepper. And similar to the tomatoes, I'm just gonna cut this in big chunky pieces, but I'm gonna start by removing the sides of the pepper. I like to just cut off the sides in big slabs. I think that's the easiest way to open up and break down a red pepper. This pepper had a little bit of a rotten spot at the bottom, so I'm just gonna cut that off and get rid of it, not a big deal. And then I'm gonna break these slabs down into smaller pieces, about two inch chunks again, just like the tomatoes. For the onion, I'm just gonna peel it and cut it into quarters. I really, really love the flavor that a little bit of onion adds to, well, any tomato soup really, but especially this one. And then for the garlic, I am going to peel it, but I'm gonna leave the cloves whole. I'll add the red pepper and the onion and garlic to the pan with the tomatoes. And I'm just gonna nestle everything in together and spread it out into a thin single layer. Next is the fresh thyme, which is a must for this recipe. I think it really helps tie everything together and it adds such a beautiful flavor, so don't skip it. And if you've never worked with thyme before, all you do is take the leaves and strip them down the stems, they come right off. I'm using a generous tablespoonful and I'm just gonna sprinkle that right over the top of all the vegetables. 
Next comes the seasoning. I am going to sprinkle about a teaspoon of salt right over the top of all of this and then give it a few grinds of fresh black pepper. And last is the olive oil. I'm using two tablespoons. I'm gonna just drizzle it over everything here. And this is an instance where quality really matters. You can see here, there's only a handful of ingredients in this soup. I'm using homegrown tomatoes and red pepper and onion, fresh herbs for my garden, and a really good quality olive oil. And all of that will make a difference. So just use the best quality that you can. Now give them a good toss. Make sure that all those veggies get coated in a layer of olive oil and then spread them out into a single layer again. Besides being delicious, look at how beautiful this pan of vegetables is with the pops of green and everything is so, so fresh. This is the kind of food that just delights me so much. And I'm gonna bake this at 425 degrees for one hour or until it looks like this. All the vegetables are very tender and you can see little bits of caramelization starting on the onions and the tomatoes that are sticking up. And that is how you know it's gonna be really good. I love that this is made entirely with fresh ingredients. There's no canned tomatoes here, no jarred red peppers. Everything is fresh from the garden. The tomatoes are flavorful. The red pepper is sweet and it's all brought together with the onion and garlic and thyme. And you can just tell by looking at this that it's gonna be delicious. After this comes out of the oven, I let it cool just slightly before blending because if you put something piping hot into a blender, it can explode out the top and burn you. And let me tell you, that is a mistake that you make only one time. So if you haven't made that one yet, take it from me, let things cool down just a little bit. And I'm putting everything in here, all the vegetables, of course, and all the juices that are on the bottom of the pan. And now I'm just gonna give it a whirl. A high-speed blender does work best for this. And because we left the skins and the seeds in, I'm gonna make sure I blend this really, really well until it's very uniform, at least a minute or so. And here it is once it's done. It is the thickest, most luxurious, beautiful tomato soup. It has a really, really lovely texture, tons of flavor, and I think you're really gonna love it. You can either eat it right now, just warm it up in a pot, or you can keep it in the fridge. This is a great soup to make ahead because it only gets better as it sits and it'll keep about a week in the fridge. I like to serve this roasted red pepper tomato soup with a generous amount of Parmesan cheese on top. It's also really good with some cream swirled in to thin it out a little bit. And of course, I'm gonna eat this with a perfectly toasted grilled cheese sandwich. There is no other way. As always, let me know if you have any questions. And if you found this video helpful, I would love it if you could give it a thumbs up and make sure to subscribe to my channel so that you are the first to know whenever a new video is posted.